Well, when you think about what's happening today with a mobile phone, uh, what is the operating system of the phone? If you give it any thought, you realize that many of the services on the phone don't actually live on the phone, even making a phone call. But certainly when you look at data services like uh, getting maps and directions, uh, when you use a Twitter client. Um, and this is really, I think, finally helping people to understand this idea I've been talking about for nearly 10 years now, that we are building an internet operating system. And in particular, the, 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 the subsystems, if you like, of that operating system are not just access to devices, but access to data. You know, uh, you know, when an application uses location, it's using a capability, a, a subsystem, if you like, of an internet operating system. Uh, when it's looking at your friend graph, it's using a subsystem of the internet operating system. And to me, the really interesting challenge that we face right now, uh, and this is the heart of what I've always thought about as Web 2.0, is whether that internet operating system is going to work like the web has worked up to now, that is, a collection of services from many, many providers that are all interoperable, uh, or whether it will all come from one provider. And so we see, uh, for example, uh, Apple uh, trying to build a, a vertical stack, which is actually really a rival to the web, uh, in which uh, everything from the device to the cloud is all controlled by Apple. Uh, we see Google, which has many aspects of, of their strategy are open at the lower end, but they're trying to become the source of all the data services that would be consumed by their apps. Um, you look at Facebook uh, trying to uh, leverage their dominance of the social graph uh, into uh, becoming, in some sense, a kind of social operating system. Uh, there is a, a, you know, something a little bit analogous to what in the, uh, in, in the Victorian era they called the great game. Uh, which was the, 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 the battle between Russia and Britain and Germany for control of the passes into India, uh, you know, in uh, Afghanistan and the like. And, you know, people are trying to figure out where are those critical passes that we can control, uh, whether it's in cloud computing, whether it's in social graph, whether it's in location. Uh, and, you know, whenever somebody is strong, somebody else is, for example, uh, working via open source or open standards to make sure that it's open. And that's actually a hopeful sign because I'm, I'm kind of hoping that most of the players cancel each other out and that we end up with uh, an internet operating system that has uh, dimensions of freedom rather than uh, an internet operating system that is controlled by one player. And the reason why that's a concern is because no matter how benevolent the player. The logic of capitalism encourages people to start trying to extract more and more out of the ecosystem. We saw it with Microsoft. You know, they, they started out with this grand vision of a computer on every desk and in every home. Well, when they got a computer on every desk and in every home, there wasn't much growth left. And the only way they could grow was by starting to consume more and more of the ecosystem that they built. And that was the beginning of the end for Microsoft. And it was interesting, in this morning's keynote, Danny Sullivan was sort of demonstrating how Google is pointing more and more to itself in search results. And actually, I wrote about this in 2007 on the Radar blog. I had a post called Trading for Their Own Account. And it was after I went to uh, New York for our Money Tech conference, I was trying to learn what would financial markets, which of course are network markets with a lot of money tied up in them, what would they teach us about the future of Web 2.0? And one of my big takeaways was this idea that uh, the big firms that used to trade on behalf of their clients started to trade against their clients. And so I predicted this. I said, okay, here's you know, Google has been, you know, all their, uh, their value has been pointing out to other people. They're going to start pointing more and more to themselves. And sure enough, you know, here we are three years later, and Danny Sullivan went through case after case after case where the, tar the end result of a Google search is a page on Google. And I think that dynamic is very bad for Google because it's, a, it, you know, they, they don't realize it, but they're going down the slippery slope to, to, to undermining the vitality of the web, which of course is w one reason why I think so many developers are excited about uh, you know, the, the Apple ecosystem, because that's new and there's a new way to make money. It's also undercut some vis-a-vis uh, -vis Facebook, because Facebook is now on the earlier part of that curve. They're out using the, uh, you know, the open graph protocol to create more opportunities for people to make connections, uh, to build value for their site. And so if I were Google, I would be very, very worried about this, and I would be thinking really, really hard about how to get back to uh, a model in which uh, they really are focused on 
you know, creating value for the ecosystem. At O'Reilly, we have a slogan that I think would be good for Google to adopt. It's create more value than you capture. And you know, go, don't be evil is binary. And people are always kind of saying, well, is this evil or is it not evil? And it doesn't give you any metrics. Whereas if you say, create more value than you can capture, you can, you can actually start to weigh, OK, yeah, we're taking away this company's business, but the, the value to users is this big. You know, or uh, you know, we're undercutting uh, this part of our developer ecosystem, but it's just the, the user value is so compelling. You can start to weigh it. And I think Google needs to be in a position where they start weighing uh, the impact. They are a giant company and they, they need to stop acting like uh, you know, the little upstart and start acting with responsibility for the entire ecosystem. And that's not just because there's some moral imperative for them to do it. There's a pragmatic imperative for them to do it because only if the web ecosystem remains vital, remains uh, uh, you know, a source of value for all the participants, uh, will developers stay here. Well, I think uh, location, identity, payment probably would be my top three. I think that e-commerce and payment are going to become hugely important uh, in, uh, on mobile. Uh, you know, we're used to now buying digital goods on a mobile phone. Uh, I think already there's a lot of e-commerce for non-digital goods, thinking the eBay app moving billions of dollars worth of merchandise. Uh, you know, you can, you can pre-order your lunch from Chipotle. Uh, uh, you know, and, and at some point you start wondering, oh, are, are the phone providers going to do an end run around the credit card companies, do an end run around, you know, there's all kinds of interesting payment options as well as startups like, um, uh, you know, Square uh, and, and others that we've seen uh, that um, uh, are, are, are taking aim at payment. So I think that's going to be really big. I also think the whole product space that Amazon covers, for example, I don't think you know, the, the problem with Amazon as a player in this, I mean, clearly they've done a great job at the low-level cloud computing of making themselves into a platform player. They've started with a flexible payment uh, service to, to open up some payment assets. But Amazon, uh, in general, if they open up, you know, they still make most of their money from an app that, that you know, a, a web app that needs to drive traffic to themselves. So they can't really give away all their secret sauce to the rest of the web. So that's where they're, they're a little bit handicapped. And, uh, you know, whereas, I, 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 but I think they could take some lessons from Facebook because, uh, you know, certainly Facebook has been able to release certain parts of what they do and give access to it in ways that reinforce Facebook's dominance rather than dissipate it. But of course, I think there are differences between the, 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 the product space and the, uh, uh, you know, the social space. But I would still think that there's some good, if, if, if Amazon strategists did some good thinking, their deep knowledge uh, of what people buy, uh, of even just what things are, uh, would be very, very valuable. Uh, and I think they've got a great payment subsystem with one click. And again, if they could make that as available and open as possible, I think that would be good for them. I, I've always thought of Web 2.0 as the Internet Operating System. I, I actually did a conference in 2002 called Building the Internet Operating System. Uh, so I was using that term before Web 2.0. Uh, in 2004, Dale Doherty, who works with us at O'Reilly, came up with this catchy name. and. Uh, uh, it, you know, I immediately wrapped all the same concepts in that name. So for me, it's, all, you know, it's always been the Internet as platform, the Internet operating system. In fact, at the very first Web 2.0 conference, uh, Bram Cohen, the creator of BitTorrent, his talk uh, was uh, making fun of my idea that the Internet was an operating system because he said there's no, you know, it doesn't have any of the real capabilities of an operating system. But I think, you know, um, uh, it, you know, it, you know, six years later, you're starting to see, particularly with the advent of mobile, you start to see, oh yeah, it really is starting to look a bit like an operating system. You know, there are more and more capabilities uh, that applications depend on uh, that are controlled by someone else. You know, and if you're if you're writing an app, a web application, you are calling on operating system services, and that that trend is going to accelerate. So I think the two are are really the same. There was a period where people thought, oh, Web 2.0, oh, that's lightweight, ad-supported, you know, maybe social media startups. Um, uh, uh, but for me, it's always been about the web, the internet as uh, the next big platform.